Hi, Lucas and Leia. It's Daddy, and now I'm reading you a book called "Oh, the Things You They Invented," all about great inventors. "Oh, the Things They Invented" by Bonnie Worth. I'm the cat in the hat, and as everyone knows, I am a cat who is fond of machines and gizmos. All through human history, since before the year one, things have been invented to help get stuff done. Tools improve daily life, and I think you will find they are fabulous products of the human mind. The inventors of tools from old and new ages will now spring to life in these very pages. If you're ready to meet them, please turn your attention to the super de duper invention convention. Jonathan Johannes Gutenberg, around fourteen thirty nine, movable type printing press. Gutenberg, who worked with metals like gold, found a way to print books that improved on the old. Before books were copied by hand, this is so. The pace of these scribes was incredibly slow, or pages were carved out of one wooden block. Then inked and pressed down onto smooth paper stock. A book took forever to make, and that's why books were for rich folks only to go by. Gutenberg's metal letters, both capital and small, periods and commas and colors and colons and all, were laid out word by word by the page in a tray, locked in and then copied in ink in this way. Page after page, he laid each out anew, printing two hundred Bibles before he was through. His printing machine, you never will guess, was made from a very old, unused wine press. The next inventor is James Watt, nineteen seventeen sixty nine. Modern steam engine. Perhaps young James Watt watched a. Tea kettle steam, and there got the spark for his steam engine dream. Did he see the effect that boiled water brings? The steam creates power that then can move things. To make matters clear, the things will now show how a steam engine works. Turn the page, and you'll know. So water heats in a boiler. Until it makes a steam, then steam leaves the boiler in a powerful stream. See, it's the boiler. It enters a cylinder, causing pistons to go. But when the steam cools, the piston will slow. See, the steam enters the cylinder where the piston would go up and down. Before Watt, steam engines did not work well at all. When the hot steam cooled down, the pistons would stall. Watt took the cooled steam, turned to water by then, and pumped it back to the boiler to heat up again. See, when the steam cools, it turns into water, and he put it back in the. And he sends it back through a pipe to the boiler. Factory machines kept chugging this way, and steam locomotives could choo choo all day. Eli Whitney, seventeen ninety three, cotton gin. To separate fibers from the cotton plant seeds took many hands picking for long hours indeed. Mister Whitney's all new cotton sorting machine turned a slow, dirty job into one quick and clean. The gin used a screen, and it worked simply to hold the seeds back while hooks pulled the cotton lint through. A big moving brush cleared the lint to make way for the next round of cotton. Why that gin ran all day. Louis de Gary, eighteen thirty-seven, early photography. The convention's next star, standing right next to me, de Gary, who helped make the first photography. He based it on a clever and ancient gizmo called the camera, 
Obscura, which we will now show. It's a box with a hole, and it made thing one frown. Because the image it captures comes out upside down. Another big problem, the image will fade, and that's where the Gary's big improvement was made. Slipped into the camera was a copper plate. Bathed in iodine crystals, its power was great. The plate copied an image that no one could see until mercury fumes made it clear as could be. To keep it from smudging, the Gary was then able to soak it in water plus salt from his table. Samuel Moss, 1838, Messages by Wire Before Morse, the mail traveled only by letter, but mail sent by wire moved much faster and better. Pulses of current could work in effect to cause an electromagnet to de deflect. Tap, tap, tap. The magnet moved an arm that beat out a mode of dashes and dots we all call Morse code. Our Congress approved of Morse code and, what's more, told Morse to string wires from D.C. to Baltimore. Telegraphs became the latest sensation, soon the telegraph wires linked up the whole nation. So yeah, telegraph wires. Next inventor, Alexander Graham Bell, 1876, telephone. Son of a deaf mother, sorry, son of a deaf mother, mother Mr. Bell really cared about improving the lives of the hearing impaired. His phonoautograph used a real human ear to draw sound vibrations the deaf could read but not hear. The gizmo led him to think maybe he could send off sounds by electricity. His assistant, Tom Watson, receiver to ear, heard Bell down the hall transmit sound he could hear. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Mm -hmm. Thomas Edison, 1877, phonograph. Before the tape player or the handy CD, phonographs with needles played r records, you see. After improving Bell's telephone, Edison had the intention of making another telephone invention. It would copy down calls so businesses could track who had called up and who to call back. Just like your ear, a receiver caught sound, copied down by a needle on a cylinder round. It, in addition to messages, it copied music and song, and because all the rage before very long. Sorry, and became all the rage before very long. Gottlieb Daimler, 1886, four-wheeled automobile. A man named Daimler, or Daimler, whom I will now mention, made a gas-fed internal combustion engine. He used this engine to power a bicycle, turning it into the first motorcycle. Next, he took a stagecoach and unhitched the horse team, then fitted it with an engine. Now what was his scheme? The wheels spun around, and experts all feel that this was the first four-wheeled automobile. Wilbur and Orville Wright, 1903. When motorized airplanes had all so far failed, the brothers Wright felt that they had the deal nailed. Making wings shaped for flight was the Wright's fondest goal to allow for balance and flying control. A movable rudder that fit on the rear was added to help the brothers to steer. They invented the fixed-wing motorized aircraft. On a hill in Kitty Hawk, after many a try, Wilbur one day set out to fly. And 852 feet in the air Wilbur flew, he made like the birds, and made history too. Mary Anderson, 1905, manually operated windshield wipers. Once streetcar drivers in the rain and in the snow, had to lean out the window to see where to go. Mary Anderson drew up, and then she made an arm on a spring with a smooth rubber blade. 
the driver pulled a lever to make the blade go and sweep off the rain and the slush and the snow. Garrett Morgan, 1923, 3 position traffic signal. Thing one just told me a thing you should know. Our street traffic signals once were just stop and go. A busy intersection, as you might well guess, accidents would happen making quite a big mess. But Garrett Morgan thought it was a must give, to give all these drivers some time to adjust. A signal could say in a moment or so, you are expected to stop or expected to go. He invented a signal that paused half the way between go and stop like yellow lights of today. Computer Inventors from 1936 to 2010 In 1936, Conrad Zeus invented a machine, the first working computer the world's ever seen. This computer had everything a modern one has, input, memory, process, output, and all of that jazz. Steve Jobs and his team all get a big nod for the Apple computer, the iPad, and iPod, not to mention the iPhone, which, as I understand, is a computer that, that fits in the hand. Tim Berns-Lee, 1989-90 a man who is really the big deal celeb had a vision for something called the World Wide Web. This web thing would have no bosses or leaders. Its contributors would be its viewers or readers. His own computer, which was brand next, set up a web of computerized text. He invented the World Wide Web. Users added content as they went along. The web was soon up and it was going strong. Politics, facts, personal blogs, home videos of kittens and dogs. Team Burns Lee, now read my lips. Put the knowledge of the world at your fingertips. And speaking of tips, I have one for you. With a dream and a plan, you can make gizmos too. And if stumped for ideas, please don't forget that you put on my red and white cat's thinking hat. The end. Wow, that was a long book about different inventors. Would you like to invent something, Lucas and Leia? Well, I love you, Lucas. I love you, Leia. Goodbye.